Look, I get it. World of Warcraft was probably your first MMO, or maybe it was the best MMO available when you got into the genre, or maybe all of your friends played it, and so you played it with them and now you have hundreds upon hundreds of hours invested. It could be any one of a thousand reasons, and I'm not here to knock your choice of MMO or your reasoning for making that choice. I just want to present to you a new idea. I'm guessing that you've temporarily left WoW numerous times over the years and gone to whatever new MMO just released that everyone was trying out. And just like clockwork, you'd always find yourself back grinding away in Azeroth very quickly. Have you ever wondered why you always go check out the new MMO? Wouldn't you just ignore a new MMO launch if you truly loved the one you're playing? I'm not trying to tell you that you need to cancel your WoW subscription and stare at a blank monitor screen waiting for this new game to come out like the rest of us crazed lunatic Ashes fans. I'm saying keep an eye on the project, do some research, join a guild, maybe learn about the systems or the classes or the story. Maybe you could watch some of my mini Ashes videos, just saying. Be ready to make the switch when the time comes. Now, why would you specifically, as a World of Warcraft player, consider leaving for Ashes of Creation when it finally releases? During my research for making this video, I talked to a bunch of friends and acquaintances that are, or were, hardcore WoW players, trying to determine why they chose that particular game. And I kept getting the same two answers over and over and over. The first, very simply, it's the game all of my friends play, so I play it too. But that answer was far less common than the second one I got so many times. And that answer goes something like this. I built so many cool relationships back when I first started playing, doing the early dungeons, grouping for quests and stuff, and I keep logging in trying to recreate that experience, but it never happens. Well, I'm pretty sure that I know exactly why that never happens. And it's actually a topic I've been screaming about for at least a decade. As we make it easier and easier and easier to communicate with each other, both in gaming and in real life, the more we cheapen the experience to the point that those relationships become completely transactional. It's why phone calls don't have nearly the effect of a face-to-face -face conversation, and texts have less effect than phone calls, and tweets have less effect than texts. I believe the younger generation has even coined a term for this, calling it single-serving friends. Someone you sit next to on a plane or a bus or stand in line next to at a theme park attraction. You talk, exchange pleasantries, and whether you had anything in common or not, you part ways and never think about each other again. If you think about it, GroupFinder works in a very similar way, except that you don't even bother to exchange pleasantries most of the time. Load in, kill thing, and load out. And don't think about the people who just helped you ever again. Don't you miss the excitement of meeting new friends while trying to complete a quest or asking around in general chat for people to go do a dungeon, getting to know people over a couple of hours of gaming together, checking your friends list to see if that awesome warlock from last night's dungeon is still around and wants to do something else? Some of my best friends today are people I met 20 years ago hanging around Pridwin Bridge while playing Dark Age of Camelot just looking for people to group with or people that I met trying to group for early World of Warcraft dungeons. I can honestly say I haven't fostered a single meaningful relationship in an MMO since all the convenience started getting added. Group finder, mob tagging systems that give you credit for just hitting a creature that someone else had already engaged with, giving you no need to communicate or set up a group to complete a quest, having these extremely dumbed down versions of raids that essentially make the experience a sightseeing tour where absolutely no communication at all is required. All of these systems that have been pioneered by World of Warcraft and then adopted by virtually every other MMO are designed to increase convenience, and they do do that but at the cost of value and meaning that would otherwise have been behind those interactions. Without the value and meaning, no attachments are formed, and the entire reason why you loved World of Warcraft in the first place is gone. And worst of all, it's highly likely you never even noticed it was happening. Ashes of Creation is taking the convenience out on purpose in order to foster those relationships we as MMO players all miss. There is no group finder. 
If you want to do a dungeon, you've got to ask around for people to do it with you. You're going to have to communicate with each other, coordinate and organize when and where to meet, who's going to do what role, all of that. You found a really hard quest with a tough creature you have to kill to complete? You can't just wait around for someone else to start combat and then jump in and help them and both of you get credit without so much as even acknowledging each other's existence. World bosses in Ashes of Creation get harder when you bring more people, forcing communication and working together. You're going to have to put in effort. And through that effort, those relationships you form will gain value and you'll rediscover that lost love of meeting new people and forming new friendships you first experienced in World of Warcraft all those years ago before so much convenience was added to the game. Beyond that, Ashes has many of the features you're used to and some brand new systems for you to explore as well. Ashes has a hybrid combat system combining tab and action combat that will allow you to use mostly tab combat if that's what you prefer, or mostly action combat if you're ready to make that switch, or anywhere in between. Raids, PvP, deep and complex crafting, mounts, pets, achievements, world bosses, it has all of that. And it has 9 races, 64 classes, and it's all brought together by a never before seen in any MMO system called Nodes that will allow players to build or destroy cities that will lock and unlock content based on how the players interact with the world, ensuring no two game servers will ever be the same and always giving you something to do. The thing is, the number of planets that had to perfectly align to allow for the development of WoW in the first place is staggering. From starting with an already very in-demand IP, coupled with a studio that already had a tremendous amount of talent and had a trend line basically pointing straight up, and then the dumb luck, foresight, or mystical wizardry that allowed them to come up with so many features that were novel back then, but have been present in basically every MMO since. Everything coming together so perfectly was not likely to happen again for a very long time, but I believe it has in Ashes of Creation. If you're interested in Ashes of Creation, you can go to ashesofcreation.com to sign up for a free account, or if you want to help me out, you can sign up using my affiliate link available in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.